Hello everyone and welcome to this new series that has been started by Yoga Kshema Rehabilitation and Wellness Center. This is a project that we are undertaking to bring to you the message of Yoga Kshema under the four facets of knowledge that we believe in. Knowledge as medicine, knowledge for awareness, knowledge for healing and knowledge for joy. Our aim is that through these series of video recordings, you will be able to assimilate knowledge, think about it, introspect, and look at how this knowledge can be used to improve the overall quality of your life. In this first series that we are starting off with, I bring a perspective of knowledge for awareness, and in this session, we are going to talk about um, nature, nurture, mindset and how this interplay between the inner and outer environments have an influence on how we see ourselves and how that perception has an impact on our behavior too. Joining us today in our discussion is Dr. Usha Vastare. She is the founder of Yoga Kshema Rehabilitation and Wellness Center and a renowned neuroscientist. Doctor, as you know, there has been traditionally two schools of thoughts that exist. Whenever we talk about self-development, self-improvement, and the traditional schools of thought, they have usually pitted nature versus nurture. Can you please throw some more light on this uh, in very simple terms, uh, the impact of nature, nurture, and how do we understand this? Yeah, certainly, Praveen. Uh, it's a very interesting question, especially connected with the introduction that you gave about this knowledge series. And this particular question is so important, the nature versus nurture yeah. debate, because if nurture was not as important, knowledge will remain just as knowledge. Just knowledge as we know is not going to be enough. This knowledge has to be put into action. Yes. When knowledge is put into action, that is where we see the changes. Yes. And that itself is a segue to understand how nurture is also, the, or the environment is also very, very important. Let's start with the nature versus nurture debate. What does that mean? Uh, even in the past century, this debate about nature, which means the influence of genetics is extremely important in um, the psychological traits, physical traits, and also our behavior. This is what is called as genetic determinism or biological determinism. And uh, the scientists proclaimed that it is the genes that are extremely important. However, after several decades, the research shifted in such a way that yes, genes are very important, but as much as genes or even much more than genes, it's the external environment or the influence of the external conditions, external environment is equally important, if not more. Mm -hmm. That is what we, the whole research shifted to the nurture uh, aspect okay. of this debate. But now we know clearly that it is the interaction of both nature and nurture yeah. which plays a huge role, especially with respect to the human behavior itself. Yeah. This genetic influence will play a huge role in our physical agility, yeah. mental uh, ability, and also intellectual capability. Sometimes it might seem it might play a bigger role than just nature. However, even in these physical, emotional and intellectual uh, capabilities, we know both play a huge role. However, in my opinion, uh, Praveen, 
the spiritual proclivity or the spiritual inclination mm -hmm. the nurture or the external environment plays a huge role and even much more of a deeper role than just the genetic environment in my um, opinion this is why if you really think about it even from younger days if a child is exposed to a spiritual environment um, rather than just looking at the world just from a materialistic perspective looking at the capability of oneself to yeah. make a kid understand how everything in this world is interconnected and uh, humans cannot live in an island mm -hmm. we we are all interconnected beings in fact um, for young children it comes in a natural way you know yeah. and if we can nurture that i think that that is where the spiritual inclination for uh, uh, um, youngsters and as they become adults yeah. makes it even more uh, easier that's a very interesting perspective and if i were to kind of just rephrase for my own understanding your message over there you are basically saying that yes genetics has an impact in terms of uh, our physical emotional intellectual makeup but when we talk about the personality or really developing into a wholesome individual the impact of nurturing is very profound and that is where that whole spiritual aspect comes into picture because we can be uh, genetically inclined you know uh, and especially these days when there is so much talk about you know genetic restructuring and being able to like you know create the perfect beings and all of that it is not about just handing everything over to genetics and dealing everything at the genetic level we have to as a race you know be very cognizant that we have to create that sort of ideal environment the nurturing environment where we are able to bring out the best within uh, each individual and that's the core philosophy that we have been like talking about through and through um an interesting segue here because we have been talking about um uh, nature and nurture and uh, i do want to um, throw in a little bit of a tidbit here uh, for our viewers uh, sir francis galton and he is very close to me uh, personally i adore him because uh, my core area of biometrics has contributed a lot he was the cousin of uh, charles darwin, darwin. Mm. and darwin spoke about evolution natural selection and it was sir francis galton who actually proposed the whole impact of nurturing also and uh, so doctor with that brief um, you know divergence let's get back to our topic um so there are two aspects of environment we see there is an outer environment and in inner environment and these are aspects that i'm sure a lot of our viewers also have often been hearing about you know there's an inner environment there's an outer environment uh, there's an internal external and all of that what constitutes inner environment and outer environment that's so true pravin before i take up this uh, question on yeah. inner and outer environment let me go back to yeah. galton for biologists as much as charles darwin galton is also equally oh. important and is quite popular <laughs> nice. amongst biologists but apart from the spiritual angle which was my opinion i want to bring in some scientific evidence yeah, for sure. that and then that will yeah. make sense how nurture is so nurturing or the external environment yeah. is so important a very recent study i think if i am correct as uh, uh, new as just last year mm -hmm. um, in copenhagen if i'm correct there was a study which was done uh, wherein they studied uh, and compared dogs pet dogs with okay. hand raised wolves oh wow and the nature of the 
hand raised wolves was very similar to the dogs of course this was done for a different reason but if you just take the results and then see if the wolves are hand raised and if they behave just like dogs right. they were looking at the evolution of dogs whether from the lineage exactly. was from wolf yeah. that, that is not what our interest is right now yeah. but if the wolves were raised in a nurturing environment in a kind and loving environment as yes. uh, as dogs even wolves which are predatory animals mm -hmm. can be as docile and kind and loving as dogs what more evidence can we have uh, saying that this nurturing environment the external environment how we raise the kids and not just kids praveen this is another thing this is this won't limit to just a young age yeah at any age for that matter it is possible by creating a nurturing loving environment even as adults it is possible to change this is where actually the new neuroscience research comes in to play saying that we all understand the connection between body and mind sure i don't even have to go into that i have yeah. been yeah. at nasium talking about it and everybody knows about yeah. it yeah. too so we understand the close connection between body and mind however not just the connection between body and mind but our behavior right. our habits our actions our experiences also are directly connected with this body and mind yeah this is what the new neuroscience research is showing and uh, what the new aspect of neuroscience research shows here is that irrespective of one's age mm -hmm. in a human being it is possible to change our behavior and if we keep doing that and not only just our behavior it can have an influence even at a genetic level too this is what is yeah. shown by epigenetic research yeah. epi means as we know higher, higher than the genes meta higher epi yeah. so yes genes have a, a huge role but the expression of the genes can be altered if the external environment also changes here yes we are talking about when i say external environment in two ways of mm -hmm. course the external environment we know yeah. about the external world which has a very uh, great True. influence along with the external environment as the uh, world the ex the external environment to the genetic material uh -huh. which is also still internal to us True. which is the mind yeah mind has a huge role to play in the expression of the genes themselves mm -hmm. so which is again internal environment yeah. but external to the hereditary the component yeah. hereditary yeah. component so mind plays a huge role in this and as we change our mind in a particular way not in a sure. flippant way as yeah. we, we we all know how to change mm. our minds not to change our minds in a flippant manner but in a particular way in an effortful way in a conscious way in a rational way yeah. if we change our mind over a period of time the structure and function of the brain itself changes right and this change in structure of function of the brain is a prerequisite actually mm -hmm. to change in our life itself okay. so this process of changing our mind in a particular way so that the structure and function of the brain changes in turn resulting in change in our life itself yeah. this whole process is called neuroplasticity this conversation gives a lot of hope because we spoke about inner and outer environments i understand that what we look as inner and outer is really at a meta level very subjective traditionally our mind our thoughts our thought patterns they're all like referred to as our inner milieu and uh, 
our external factors, our external environment, the relationships that we are in, um, the environment, the home, everything constitutes like at a broad level, everything that is external to us. But if you look at the, uh, at, a, at a genetic expression level, even mind becomes an external environment. <laughs> so it is really relative at what level we are looking at it. But you laid a particular emphasis on neuroplasticity of the brain and how we can use the power of neuroplasticity of the brain at any age and when it is really coupled with determination and with full involved um, effort towards changing our mind, our brain and it, it results in that sort of like a physical change, it has an impact on even our genetic makeup. And that is how we will be able to have a lasting impact and make, you know, long lasting, lifelong lasting changes. And that gives a lot of hope, <laughs> you know, uh, sure. I mean, physical traits perspective, there are a uh, lot of avenues <laughs> that exist for the rich and for many others who are able to afford to make those physical changes. But the reliance on our own innate abilities and coupling that with our uh, nurturing environment that you can transform within yourself, you can transform yourself through your brain, your mind, that is very powerful, that, uh, that's very empowering. And um, with neuroplasticity, I would like to call upon, uh, call attention towards uh, very many videos that are already available on Yoga Kshema channel for viewers who would want to know more about this, uh, please uh, certainly visit our channel, keep visiting and look at all the other videos where we cover neuroplasticity of brain in uh, greater detail. So in this session, we understood about nature, nurture, we heard about the positive message about how we can transform ourselves no matter at what age we are in. In our next episode, we will take this conversation a little bit further. We'll talk about mindset and uh, about inner and outer environments a little bit more. I look forward to seeing you there. Thank you so much for your attention. If you have any questions, if you have any feedback, please write to us at yogakshema.india at gmail.com. Thank you so much for your time and insights. I'll again meet you very shortly in our next session. Sure. Thank you so much. Namaste. Namaste.